Mons has been around for more than a minute making audio, but now they've turned their ray gun over towards peripherals. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety of Walkie Triple XL. And I've just recently had a whole bunch of monster stuff dropped to my desk. And uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm not mad at their first attempts at making peripherals. They've done a pretty decent job with their gaming headset. Eight out of 10 product definitely could get some improvements and maybe a small price crunch. And it's actually pretty much the same for this keyboard. They've done a really good job of getting a lot of the basics right. Um, a couple little tweaks here and there and they'll have like a really, really good product. At the price point though, it does feel a little bit expensive compared to some other options that are available in the market. So let me substantiate that as I take you through this keyboard's paces. So let's start on the back of the keyboard. You've got four corners that are rubberized and then two kickstands, which do give you, I think about a 27 degree increase. They are quite a, it is quite a nice with the kickstands up on the keyboard for typing and stuff. I found that definitely was the most comfortable way to use it, but there's no rubberizing on the end of either of those feet, which I think it's just a little bit of rubber there. It doesn't have to be incredibly thick, half a mil even, it's gonna do the job just to make sure it doesn't slide around on the on the table because the top now is has basically nothing keeping it stable on the desk. It didn't really move around, the two at the bottom were enough, but just, just a little bit more there. Uh, some people are a little bit aggressive on the keyboard and that will help considerably. Light beam going around the outside as well. It is programmable, well, with the light beam button over here, I say programmable, it's, just, it's sort of a strong word. It's only really got a couple of modes in it, uh, but you can then switch between them with this button on the top over here. So it can be solid colors, it can be running colors, um, It can you can turn it off as well. So if you don't really want to have the light beam in, you can then turn it off. But it's decently customizable that you'll be able to get it solid blue or red or whatever your theme is for your build, you should be able to get this almost in line. And then similarly next to that, you've got the lighting button for the keyboard itself. And that's what, how they're trying to do this. There's absolutely no software for this. Everything is controlled from the keyboard. Then you have those special functions themselves. So with the FN key now, I can, for instance, put it into, if I hit, uh, sorry, not F1, but if I hit one over there in M1, then it puts it into an FPS mode. Then there's various modes for different games that highlight different key sets on them. And then from within that mode, you can customize the colors and stuff onto the keyboard. And then with the switch of this button, then you can go back to the default sort of modes and stuff. You can program some of the modes on here. They are, they are enough that I don't think you would need to. Your standard ripple effects and snaking effects and um, per key lighting, reactive lighting and stuff. It's all present at base on the keyboard. All of the default ones that I think you would normally want to see. I personally love color wheel. That's always my favorite is with a spinning color wheel because it just does look nice. You can slow them up and speed them or speed them up and slow them down at least. Uh, same thing with the function set over here. You're gonna, you've got three going up and then three going down. And then similarly for your brightness, you've got uh, three going down and then three going back up. But the numlock, caps lock and scroll lock indicator keys will flash when you reach the top or the bottom on each side, which is a nice little touch to have. Speaking of nice little touches though, this scroll over here for the audio, is incredibly satisfying. It's really well built out. It gives a really good solid feel. Um, I don't particularly like the way that the plastic is cut out around it. I think it should have been done just a little bit neater, but the actual feel of the of scroll itself is really, really nice. Speaking of feel of things, the keycaps are really, really cool. They're kind of like a crossover between the old style and the new style. They are double shot PBTs. They do have pretty good shine through. It is north facing LED. So you're not gonna be able to change out because of that middle row issue with alignments of having north versus south facing LEDs. So a little bit less customization into the future, but I don't really think that was the intention here. It's not exactly a modular keyboard. So it's got a slew of built-in features and stuff, but what is it like to use? Well, it's actually, pretty damn nice. The keys themselves have a really nice feel to them. It's kind of weird. They like 
almost rattle from side to side like it, but the actual linearity of the key is incredibly good. Typing and stuff on this is pretty nice, I've got to say. The only thing for me on the usage side of thing that I had a small complaint on, uh, well, a complaint on really, are the stabilizers, especially for spacebar. Are particularly loud. You are gonna wanna get some lube to get like a better feeling from that. Shift as well. Not fantastic, it's very mushy, it rattles even just doing that. Backspace as well, not great. But you can see they, they do have some good stabilizers in some of the keys as well. So like the enter, this backspace or this uh, uh, backslash over here, the tab and the caps lock all feel absolutely fantastic. They also sound pretty good. It is plasticky, I mean. That is just the nature of the keyboard being built from plastic. It is going to sound like that. The chassis is pretty damn rigid though. I cannot bend it at all. It doesn't have any flex in it. So that's really, really good. It is super, super solid. So it's pretty well built and put together. If someone wants to home invade, could you use this as defense? Definitely. If you smash someone in the face with this, they're going to feel it. It's got normal function key sets as well across the top of it. Anywho, let's talk about the switch, the most important part of the keyboard. I don't really know what it is. The only thing I could see that's close to it is a Keychron K4. So I, I'm assuming that they've taken from that because these are optical switches. They're not actually traditional, normal switch type. So they don't have a switch bump in them that can wear out. They just have an optical line through that the switch then breaks through 1.5 millimeter actua actuation force. So it does feel very, very responsive and 45 gram actuation force on the switch itself. So the feel of the switches in general is pretty good. Interesting, like sort of old school audio almost gives like a tactile sort of feel and the feedback to it. Um, beyond the stabilizing of some keys, I mean like this one, it's basically perfectly stabilized and then shift is it. So that's why I'm not mad at it. I just would like to see that fixed and improved or just get some lubrication, which is so I'm, I'm going to invest in some so that I can lube these up to show you like a before and after of that and the effect that it will give to your feel of your keyboard. So all in all, this is a pretty feature rich keyboard that you can do a, quite a lot of stuff to. No real macro editing and stuff, which would have been nice. It does have keys sort of set up for it, but it's incredibly complicated on like how it works and stuff. Everything built onto the keyboard. It's not the first time I've run into this. I've seen it with Cooler Masters and stuff as well. And it's nice if that's what you like. I personally prefer software because I can look at the thing, build my macro or my LED profile, etc., and then put it onto the keyboard. I prefer that way around. It's also a little bit more user-friendly than function, poke, function, poke, function, poke the whole time. But it can, it can do everything you would feasibly want it to do. And optical switches are generally only found in much higher end keyboards. So that's why I was surprised that this was an optical. I just wish it was a name branded switch so that we knew exactly what to expect from it. 60 million lifetime is pretty good as well, but there's keyboards like for instance the k60se which uses cherry violas which are kind of similar to this in feel that are cherry mx and we know exactly what they are that keyboard is 100 200 rand more expensive than this is right now so it's a little bit unpriced competitive i would like to see it closer to 1314 i'd say 1300 it's then kind of untouchable as far as like the overall presentation build quality etc goes one thing I don't like about this keycap set though on the mirror finishes on the bottom over here, as you are using key pullers and stuff, which you have to, because I cannot, I have incredibly good grip strength and I cannot get these keycaps off of these switches. They are incredibly tight on there, which is a good thing. But as you use a key puller and you slip and slide, which normally is gonna happen, even though it's plastic, it is going to scratch over there. That is the only about the only complaint I really have with that. Some of the lettering could be a little bit better and a little bit uh, better shine through and stuff. But for a first gen product, for their first attempt ever, this thing is pretty damn solid. It's also a bit unique. It's got like, um, you know, the way that they've done this, the, the edges on this and the stand like up almost like shape. It's very unique to Monster. There's not, I can't just Google and go find a, a, a generic for this on Alibaba. So at least it is a completely unique product. Um, I just like more information about the switch and then improved stabilizers. The rest of it, I'm pretty happy with, I've got to be honest.
Anywho, that is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.